Welcome to our carol service. Um, this year the safety restrictions and the like have meant that the Three Kings can't travel so far, but it also means that we're not able to be in our church building, sadly. So we're here in a Glossop stable. Well, sort of, anyway. It's not quite the same atmosphere being at home, is it? But let's make it special, shall we? So if you're on your own or with others, um, I invite you to join in with singing out the carols nice and loudly. Don't worry what the neighbours think. Join in with the prayers and enjoy the drama. They've all been done by members of our church. And this year, of course, we're looking forward to vaccines, aren't we? I can see you thinking, get to the point. Mm -hmm. Well, I've been wondering, in years to come, how will you or I remember this time? I know there's been all sorts of things going on out there, but how will you or I have changed? How will it have changed us? And this got me wondering, what about the people who were there that first Christmas? What happened to them years later? How did they remember it all? What changed for them? Later we've got some visitors who can maybe shed some light on that question. But first of all, let's pray. Lord, we come to Christmas with all sorts of thoughts and feelings. But in a year when there's been plenty of darkness, we ask now that you would shine your light into our lives and the lives of those around us. Amen. And on the subject of light, here's our first reading from the first chapter of John's Gospel in the Bible. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and he was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was a life, and that life was a light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him, all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light, the true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognise him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling amongst us. We have seen the glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth.
month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered, what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid. Mary, you have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month for no word from god will ever fail i am the lord's servant mary answered may your word to me be fulfilled then the angel left her
him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord. Yea, Lord, we greet thee, born for our salvation. the Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire and all returned to their ancestral towns and homes to register for the census. Because Joseph was a descendant of the King of David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He travelled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee and he took with him Mary, his fiancée, who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for her baby to be born, and she gave birth to her first son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodgings available for them. I've been looking back through my diary. December... 0 AD. I was there, you know. At least that's what I tell my friends. I wasn't exactly there. I was at the hotel, staying upstairs. Fortunate, I think, that I'd arrived in time to get a room. Anyway, I was just settling down to sleep when the innkeeper shouts, Will anyone give up their room? There's a chap here with a pregnant woman ready to burst. Well, that was pretty stupid of them, wasn't it? Irresponsible. Travelling that far when you're going to have a baby. And you... I suppose they had to. All us in the inn, we'd had to travel thanks to the census. We were all tired. We all had our own problems and where would I go at that time of night? Anyway, there were plenty of other people who could help. I was the first one there. Surely, if someone was going to give up a bed, it should be the last one in. Or someone who hadn't travelled as far as I had. Or someone who was good with babies. Or, well, someone else was bound to help. I turned the light out and went back to sleep. Mind you, it wasn't easy that night. What with that woman's screams from the stable below and, and then the baby crying and people coming and going. Of course, I never realised who the baby was. It turned out later that he was a bit of a celebrity. Some even said the Messiah. Son of God. I sometimes wish that I'd gone down to sea, but without giving up my bed, of course. But my story doesn't end there. 
Yes, here we are. Years later, I heard him again. No longer a baby crying, but a man in his thirties. He was quite a teacher, this Jesus. He said, love God and love your neighbour. One smart guy asked him who his neighbour was. And he told a story, a story about a man who was in desperate need of help. A story about people walking on the other side of the road, too busy or maybe too afraid to help. A story about a foreigner, a Samaritan, taking pity on him, carrying him on a donkey to an inn, paying for his room for as long as he needed. Jesus said, go and do likewise. Challenging words. To be honest, a bit too challenging for me. Maybe one day, Or maybe not. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them. The glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, 
Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. I've been looking back through my diary and you know, I was there. I was only a shepherd, a nobody to be honest. I'd wandered off from God, but he found me. The angel, then more angels filled the sky. Wow. We left our sheep and ran into town. Nothing else mattered. The baby was in a feeding trough, just as the angel had said. The son of God was born. And I was there. I was there. We ran off to tell everyone. The whole town was buzzing. Well, almost. Some people said we were crazy. There was a couple upstairs at the inn who weren't very happy at all. They shouted at us to shut up. What a night. It was so special. You know, it changed my life. It changed my attitude to others. It changed my attitude to God. This God who loved enough to send angels to humble shepherds like me. This God who loved enough to send his son as a baby in a feeding trough. You know, I never forgot that experience. But after a while, I suppose it became less important. I talked to God less, talked about God less, went to the synagogue less. I'd gone out of good habits and back into some bad ones. I even began to question whether it was real or not. But my story doesn't end there. You see, I often wondered what happened to that baby, that special baby. Well, 30 years later, I found out. In here. I was visiting a relative. When Jesus arrived in town, maybe it was a coincidence maybe God who knows he was healing people casting out demons and telling amazing stories I pushed through the crowd Jesus noticed me or maybe it was the overpowering smell of sheep he noticed whatever it was he began to tell a story he said there was a shepherd who had a hundred sheep and one wandered off but instead of staying with the 99, the shepherd abandoned them, a bit like I did all those years ago. He left the 99 to find the one. And when he found the lost sheep, he was so excited. He had a party for all his friends and neighbours. Just one sheep. Crazy, I know. But Jesus said, God is like that shepherd. Always ready to party. Always looking for lost sheep just like me. Hello Paws. Oh, we're down in, the, down in the lounge here. Oh, did you like that shepherd up on the hill? You think you've seen him somewhere before? Yeah, well, I think you'd seem vaguely familiar as well. Yeah, but I'm so pleased he came back to Jesus after that time. But what about his dog? His dog? I don't know. I don't know whether he had a dog. Maybe he had a dog maybe he had a sheep dog maybe he had a, a shepherd dog he was a shepherd wasn't he yeah but it wouldn't have stayed as a sheep dog huh what what do you mean by that well because of all the angels what well, what difference would all the angels make they would have turned his hair all curly oh what what, what do you mean by that the dog would have been terrier fart. <laughs> Very good. You know, that's really terrible. Yes, yeah, I know. I think we better move sw swiftly on there. 
maybe we better pray. Um, but maybe we need it. But first of all, some of our young people have been asking people about what uh, they feel about this coming Christmas. I wonder, if you were watching this pause, I wonder how would you answer their questions if you were asked the same things? And maybe you at home, if you ask these questions, how would you answer them? Shall we watch? What would make you happy this Christmas? Um, being able to see my family again, getting all together on Christmas Day. Uh, opening presents. Um, I would love to go home and see my family. Meeting my family. Celebrate it with friends and family. To see my family. Uh, we went out to London and uh, my wife, my, my wife, my daughter's expecting, so as long as she keeps it in there until after Christmas. What would make you sad this Christmas? Um, uh, if we end up in a lockdown and we can't go. If I wasn't allowed to go home and see my family, that would be not very nice. Yeah. Not getting the presents I wanted. If we weren't allowed to do that, or we got snowed in like yesterday, or we couldn't get out of Dawson. Not seeing my family. If I, for some reason, was not able to see these friends and family. What are you most worried about this festive season? Being on my own. I'm worried that perhaps it won't be as nice, as fun, as, as it is usually. I just thought the motor homes would break down on the way down there. <laughs> <laughs> not seeing my family. I'm worried about people going a bit mad over the five days at Christmas where they can just start meeting everybody and hugging and having a spike of COVID. What's your favourite carol and why? Um, in the big midwinter, which is probably not what most people say, but the reason I like that one is because when we used to go carol singing as teenagers, I didn't struggle on the high notes. Carol Vorderman's quite nice on, uh, on Countdown. Uh, well, I think my favourite carol that you sing, um, I'd have to say, uh, Old Little Town of Bethlehem, because you can sing it like a football champ. At the moment, it's O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Joy to the world, because it is a joyous tune. Uh, I, don't, I don't really have one. I don't really have one, to be honest. I, I like, I, I don't know if it counts as a carol, um, the Serpent King song, I don't know if that counts as a carol, but I like that. Okay. What difference does Christmas make to you? Uh, it's a lot of work, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. Uh, and I do get to go home and see my family, that's good. Hard work and tired. It's, it's just an exciting time, you're just smiling a lot and it's lovely. It reminds me a lot the, with my family when I was a kid, when I was little, and a lot of happy memories and just going to church and seeing the kids bringing their presents in. I like that. It's very different to all the rest of the year because it's, uh, everyone is very happy all the time and I like that very much. Everybody seems to be happy at Christmas. I don't like that, it just makes me smile. If you were a food from Christmas dinner, what would you be? I'd be cranberry sauce. Because it's only once a year and it's nice tasty. <laughs> you like rolls? Rice potato. Rice potato, we'll go with that. <laughs> Roast turkey. Probably Christmas pudding. I would be Christmas cake because I like it a lot. I think actually that's there's a lot of things there that we could pray about. Should we spend some time praying now? Okay, let's all be still and quiet. 
And what we're going to use as a response is, as I say, Lord, into the darkness, we can all say together, wherever we are, bring your light. Lord, into the darkness, bring your light. Let's pray. Lord God, it's been a difficult year for so many people. We pray first for our families, our friends, and those in our local community. We pray for those who are sick and for those who care for them, for those who are missing people this Christmas, and for those who are afraid of ones they are with, for those without work, and for those who are overworked. Just in the quiet, think of those we're concerned about and maybe you'd like to whisper their name. Lord, we pray that each one we've mentioned out loud or in our hearts and all those on our, in our thoughts at this time would know your presence and your peace this Christmas. Lord, into the darkness, Bring your light. We pray for our nation and our world. We thank you for the great news of vaccines. We thank you for the scientists who've developed them and for all those who will distribute them. We pray for an end to this pandemic in our country, but also around the world, and particular in the poorest countries of the world where people already suffer so much. Lord, into the darkness, bring your light. And we pray for ourselves. We thank you for the good news of Christmas, but we recognise that we often get our priorities wrong. We forget to love you or to love one another, and we're sorry. We thank you for your love and your forgiveness for your son coming into our world to be our saviour. And we pray this Christmas that we would discover more of you. Lord, into the darkness, bring your light. Amen. And now let's join in the Lord's Prayer. This is a version recorded earlier in the year and the words are on your screen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us today Forgive us our sins. As we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours.
I've been looking back through my diary. I was there. Oh yes, I was there. I am the Lord's servant, I'd said. And I meant it, but I didn't really know what to expect. A young mother with her new baby, my baby. Everyone knows now that he was special, but I knew then. That stable was no place for any baby. It was dirty, it was cold, it was smelly. And this was no ordinary baby. This was God's son. And mine. Like any new mother, I was asking questions. What should I do? What should I think? What if he doesn't like me? But more than that, I desperately wanted to do better for him. Better than a feeding trough. Better than an outcast. But all I could do was hope. Hope for something better. Anything better for my child. My son crying in the darkness. Of course, my story didn't end in the stable. My baby didn't stay a baby. <laughs> they grow, you know. I remember the panic of losing him in Jerusalem. He was 12. We found him in the temple. In his father's house, he said. I should have known. Then there was that wedding. Almost without thinking, I told the servants to trust him. And I suppose I did by then. Jars and jars of water into wonderful wine. And as the years went by, I understood more of just who he was. My son, but also God's son. My son, but also my saviour. Then the awful horror of what that meant pierced my heart. Once again I looked into the eyes of my son. Not in the wood of a feeding trough, but now with the wood of a cross at his back. All those years of caring for him, loving him, had come to that. Brutally killed as a criminal, when he'd done nothing wrong. Why didn't he just give in to them, deny who he was, to save himself? No, instead he gave his life for others, so that we could be put right with God. That was his love. That was God's love. Love that went through the squalor of a stable, through rejection, through pain, through death on a cross, but love that also triumphed in a resurrection life. My son, my saviour, my hope, my joy, my life. We've heard three stories, stories that started in a stable, but didn't end there. And I wonder if you could relate to any of them. The guest at the inn, one of many, no doubt, who was too busy with other priorities to go looking for Jesus, who missed out on one of the greatest events in history. And when he did meet Jesus, the call to love God and to love others was just too challenging. And he missed out again. Or the shepherd, the shepherd who had an encounter with God but drifted away, but who then came back and was welcomed with open arms like a shepherd welcoming back lost sheep. Or Mary, who stayed with Jesus throughout it all, through tough times and joyful times, who continued to grow in her faith and her love for her son, who discovered that the baby in a manger became her saviour on a cross. So what about you or me? I mean, what if, what if you'd been there that first Christmas? Where would you have been? What would you have done? How would you have reacted? And years later, if you looked back, what difference would it have made to you? What would have changed? Would you have discovered Jesus? 
Or would you have missed out or maybe drifted away? And what about this Christmas? In the future, when we each look back on 2020 and the start of 2021, I wonder how will we remember it? Now you might say, of course, it's been a time to forget. I don't want to remember it at all. But what about, could it st instead be a time to remember? A time when something really good happened in your life, something that was life changing, aside from everything else or amongst everything else even. Could this be our chance in a lifetime, our opportunity to reassess our lives, to rethink things, to change our habits, to change our direction maybe? You see, I think one of the questions for all of us this Christmas is, is our biggest hope in a vaccine or a nativity scene? You see, the vaccines are great news, aren't they? Brilliant science. And they'll solve a lot of our issues. But will they solve all our problems? Or will there still be things that are missing? Something deep? Do we really want everything to return to how it was before? Were our lives really that sorted? Jesus came as a light in the darkness. He showed us how to live and he became our saviour. He called us to follow him. He called us to, to discover life in all its fullness. So in the years to come, when you look back on this time, will you say you grew closer to God or further away? More light or less? Will you have changed for the better? Will you have thrived or just survived? Will you have explored the big questions of life, reassessed your priorities or missed the opportunity? The good news is it's not too late. Those questions for all of us, however close to God we feel or are. But if you want to explore faith for the first time, or maybe a return like the shepherd did, then why not try our Alpha course? It's an opportunity to explore the big questions of life. Here's a bit more about it. Big questions. The last year has been extraordinary, hasn't it? Our lives have been turned upside down, our priorities have been challenged, and many of us are left with big questions. We've got great news, the vaccines are coming, woohoo! But will a shot in the arm answer all those big questions? If you've got questions about life, about faith, about purpose, then why not make this the time when you look for answers? Bring something good out of this time. Why not try our Alpha course? It's an opportunity to explore life and Christian faith. We run it every year here in Glossop and many places do around the world. But this year it's a bit different because we're online. It's still all free. Um, it means you don't get the free food, unfortunately, this year because we can't be together. But you can join in just from your own home via Zoom. You can even eat your own food if you want to while we, while we do it. It's on Wednesday evenings, we'll be having a chat, we'll be watching a video, and then we share our thoughts and our, our stories, our questions. Starts in January, here's what it's all about. Every day we ask so many questions. What should I wear? What's the weather gonna be like? How am I gonna fit everything in? But then there are those bigger questions, like why am I here? Where am I heading? Is there more to life than this? I had arrived at an answer to the most important issue that we humans ever deal with. Is there a God? And I had arrived there without ever really looking at the evidence. I was supposed to be a scientist. At 28, uh, I had gotten many of the things that I thought I wanted. You know, 
uh, my girlfriend was on the cover of magazines, I had a Beamer, and I was so unhappy. It was a realization maybe that I would, I would never find happiness where I was looking for it. I think for so many years, you know, I always just strived to be strong in myself. All I needed was me and my buddies and, you know, would be like invincible. But the truth is, none of us are. And I found purpose, I found meaning, I found hope. God took something so broken and made it a beautiful art piece. Alpha is a place where you can be yourself. You can say what you think and challenge everything. No question is too complex or too simple. And what your point of view is, is as important as anyone else's. We are going on a journey together, an adventure to explore the questions of life, faith, and meaning. This Christmas, however near or far you feel from God, I hope that it will be a time to remember for good reasons, a time when you change for the better, not a time just to forget, a time when you grew closer to God, a time when you discovered light in the darkness, a time when you discovered hope, not just in a vaccine, but hope in the one at the centre of a nativity scene, hope for a lifetime and a life beyond. Let's pray before we sing our final carol, shall we? Lord God, we want this Christmas to be one to remember for good reasons, not to forget. Help us to take this opportunity to change for the better and to grow closer to you, to know more of your love, your joy and your peace this Christmas and in years to come. Amen.
I hope you've enjoyed this time, found it helpful, thought-provoking. You can find a nativity service on our website, which we recorded earlier. Um, and there will also be another service you'll find there on Christmas Day as well. On Sunday the 3rd of January, we're going to be back in our buildings for those of you who feel able and want to join us there. But we'll also be streaming our services live at 11 o'clock on our website and on YouTube. So you can watch them online from home as well. Alpha starts online on the 13th of January. Don't forget that. Either come or, or pray for it as well. And now may God bless you and all those whom you love with his light, his peace and his joy this Christmas and in the months ahead. Amen. Have a great Christmas and hopefully see you in the new year. God bless you.